If you want to build a mega nav, full screen, or one of those compact, trendy menus, then you need to understand how the Webflow nav component actually works. This isn't just another tutorial on how to recreate something. I want to actually give you the tools necessary so you can make anything. Well, any nav. So you can make any nav. I gotta say, there's a ton of weird things about this component, but I still think it's much better than building one from scratch. Just because it gets you up and running fast and there's all these features that makes your life much easier. So we'll tear it apart and I'll show you where all the gotchas are. All the things you think you understand, but there's some Webflow voodoo going on in the background. But first, we need to understand how it all works, so let's jump in. Okay, so let's start by adding a navbar element, a fresh one. Add elements, this plus button, and scroll all the way down until you hit advanced. Advanced. Under advanced is where you'll find the nav bar component. Click that and then right away it will drop into your canvas and you'll, you're greeted with this beautiful nav bar settings. If for some reason you accidentally close this out, don't worry, there's literally two different ways you can get to it. One, the easy access route as long as you have the nav bar element selected. You can hit this gear icon and it'll pop back up and you can kind of drag it around wherever you need it to go or your element settings by hitting D or clicking this gear icon over there and then scrolling down and then you'll see your nav bar settings. I typically like to go through this route, um, but you know, do you. The very first thing you'll see is menu, show and hide. This just refers to default property or functionality of this nav bar that you're able to, when you go down to tablet, this fancy icon element over here appears. If we go into preview, when you click on it, it'll drop down essentially uh, uh, the list of your nav items. Moving down here, the type, easing open, easing close, these are all interaction properties. For what we're trying to do, trying to be a pro at this nav component, we are not gonna be touching those. We wanna have full control. Just leave everything here default. Same with the menu fills page height, disable scroll offset when fixed. I normally just never touch those things. There is a disable scroll that I'll talk about at the end, so stick around for that. The last button that's associated to the nav bar settings is absolutely pointless, uh, which is this add link button. Um, I'll be going over all of the different uh, elements within this nav bar component and you'll kind of see that the nav link is absolutely pointless. That's all everything with the nav bar settings. All right, let's open up the navigator by clicking this button right here uh, or hitting Z on your keyboard um, if you're a super pro like me. Um, but you'll see here is our nav bar element. Um, and the very first thing that you see here is the wrapper for the entirety of the thing. This is the, the element that holds the tag nav bar um, or nav and also the thing that as we saw earlier, um, has access to all of these settings. So just click in that. The other cool thing about this nav bar is if you have this one selected, you're able to now have access to an element trigger called nav bar opens. And this nav bar opens um, just means if, you're, if you have your menu button activated, um, you're now able to kind of control the different techniques and uh, or interactions associated with that. So looking through all of the default styles that this nav bar has, it has position relative. So I would recommend for any default that you do want to keep, just um, click it again just so it, it gets highlighted to blue. Um, that way when you're kind of trying to figure out why an absolutely positioned element or something like that is keep, keeps getting stuck somewhere, you might need to figure out who has the relative positioning that it's referencing, right? The second element uh, or property rather that the nav bar comes with is this terrible background color, hashtag DDD. This one, uh, <laughs> I don't know what design you're making that you wanna keep this color, but for the most part, it is good to apply your background, if, if you're gonna have a background to your nav, to apply it here. Uh, I think that's a pretty good logical place to put it, right? Moving on into the second kind of element that we have here, which is the container. The container is a bit of a love-hate relationship that I have with this guy. Um, that's because I used to add my different layout properties directly on this element, which is a terrible idea actually. Um, and it's bad because 
uh, flex properties don't behave the same way that you would expect it to were you to just apply these different layout properties on a standard div. So let me quickly demonstrate that because it's kind of crazy. So uh, div block, let's drop a div block here, right? Um, and let's say we want something that there's a div on the left side, like this brand div right here, and then our menu icons are on the right side. So we want them to be opposite each other, right? Um, and the way you would normally do that is you would probably use Flexbox for it, right? Um, so let's actually add two divs in here. So here's our div block, and now our div block has two div blocks inside of it, right? So here's one, two, and then the parent div block is right there. So we want this div block to be on the left side, this one to be on the right side. How do we do that? Normally you would do that in uh, Flexbox, right? Um, kind of like what we see here on the navigation. Selecting the parent div block, if we set the display to flex and then justify to space between, there you go. That's what you have, right? Super simple. I mean, it says it right here on the UI icon. Distribute evenly from start to end. So you would expect that in this container, if I hit, you know, this guy and this guy, that that would happen. That's not what happened. Like what? So now uh, our container has kind of squished them and put them in the middle here for some reason. And that's super annoying. And you might be scratching your head and spending hours, kind of like I did in the beginning, uh, trying to figure out what the hell is going on here, right? So now you're probably gonna be like, oh, let me set this to 100%, oh, right. And then let me set it to a display and then maybe move it to the, and then it's like why it still looks not what I want, right? So uh, yeah. This container is a bit of a pain. Um, so what I recommend is keeping the container here uh, because you can. And what you would probably want is just to apply normal container type of uh, you know properties to it. I would recommend uh, to just keep your container simple and have this be where you actually set your max width and you center the element in the viewport by setting margin autos on it, right? So I have pre-made classes I'm using client first. So I have this uh, class called container large. I would apply that in here. Um, and now I have, you know, my max width all set up. If I do need to apply flex or all these other things, my recommendation is to add another div inside of this container large and then nest everything in here uh, that you want. And then here, um, I would then, you know, go ahead and like just name this, I don't know, nav layout or something, right? The next element is the brand, literally the same as this element right here. Um, it's, it just so happens to be fancy and have the word brand on it, which is nice. And typically best practice dictates that this would point to your homepage. That's kind of what you would do there. And then you would put your logo directly in here. The only thing is uh, you have to remember that it is a link and so it's going to inherit whatever you have as your default link styles. Other things about this, it's set to position relative and actually the, the biggest thing about this thing is that it's set to float. It uses float. So um, float is kind of terrible and very outdated. There's a very specific use case for float um, and I don't even know if it's uh, debate these days, but back in the day, this is how we would do layouts. It's just using floats. And before that it was tables, right? So, uh, and float was really kind of difficult to grasp. Um, so anyways, without going to into like history, um, I would highly recommend to just set this to uh, none or clear, or just, I guess, don't float and then clear, just double click that and set that to none. That's all you really need to know. Do not float your elements, please. You know, use Flexbox use grid like we have better tools for that now and then the the next thing i would probably do in some ways i would maybe you know make this brand div into a display block just so i have a little bit more control so that it's not kind of sliding in line onto things all right so moving down the next one is nav menu so this is the container when uh, webflow does its magic and starts hiding things like we saw on tablet view um, all the items just disappeared well it's referencing this exact element right here, this nav menu. The biggest thing to note is that if for some reason you delete this, you lose that functionality. You can't just like add another div and call it um, whatever it was, like nav menu or something, um, and expect, you know, our fancy 
show and hide button to start working again. Um, you've lost that functionality. It has to be the exact element uh, that came with this nav bar when you first dropped it in. The other thing with this nav menu, and I'll show you in a little bit, so stick around, um, is that this is the thing that if you wanna create full screen navigation experiences that you see on really cool awards websites, this is the thing that's going to get you there, right? Um, so how you would do that just as a, you know, quick preview, I suppose, is you would set this nav menu uh, to fixed and then make it full. Um, and then you can adjust your heights and, and all that good stuff. Um, of course, set it to appear uh, on desktop right away. And then once you have it fixed, you can go ahead and kind of like have it span the entirety of your website. Now you have a, a nav menu button. So when I open this menu button, boom. There's our nav menu. It's huge, it's full screen, it's awesome. So more realistic examples of it is here in this great looking project by this person. Link below if you want to clone this. Um, they have their nav menu here, and if I hit show, it brings up this entire thing. And this entire thing is uh, you know, the menu item or the nav menu div. Inside of nav menu are three completely useless things. I hate these guys. Um, so I guess if you just want a default Webflow setup, you can use them, but they're so finicky because first of all, they have these default styles of, and, and they're in pixels, uh, so you don't want that. They're inline, um, so that's difficult. Um, and then also, uh, you know, they're positioned relative. Uh, yeah, they, they just have all the stuff about them. And I guess the nice thing is if you're just, if you just have text links, you can, you have access, you know, when you have nav bar selected again, you have access to this, to the add link button. But again, like you can just drop links in here. So there's, I don't know, it, it, they're just bad. Um, if you wanted an icon next to this text, you can't do that because this is a text link and not um, not a link block. So it's not like it can contain multiple things. Um, you, you can't convert it to a drop dropdown. Um, the list goes on and on. Just my recommendation, if you are trying to be a pro, just go ahead and do this. Just hit the delete a bunch of times until you don't see them anymore. But make sure you don't delete the nav menu. We need the nav menu. Um, and then, you know, when you're ready, and want to do things the right way, you put in link blocks in here, right? And then in your link block, you could put a text block. Um, and then you could put about page. Now you have proper things and you can style them, control them, do whatever you need to do um, you know, with them. So nav links, completely useless. Please delete them, uh, we don't need them. Let's get to the last element here. The last element is the menu button, which we keep seeing uh, on our tablet view because that's where we have it set. So there's some funny things about this menu button. By default, uh, for some reason, the display is none. Why is that? That's strange. I think that's a bug. Let's see. Yeah, no. <laughs> it's set to none by default if uh, you have it hidden. You know, it's not showing on the desktop. When you go to tablet, it'll automatically set itself to block. So that's great. Uh, it comes with some padding, so you'll wanna change that so you're not stuck in this pixel value. Let's see, what else here? Uh, it has position relative, and for some reason, it's also position float. Um, so, you know, don't do that. Remove the float, please. Position things the standard way. If you want, sure, use the float, I suppose, but if you're gonna do that, just make sure you double click into it so you know you've made it an awful mistake of using the float. All right, so I would recommend, uh, let's leave it a float for the purpose of this tutorial, I guess, but um, yeah, don't use the float. The only other default about this thing is this icon. So this icon is an SVG, which means it's, uh, and not only is it an SVG, but it also has some values within the SVG that specifies it to have this property called color fill, which means we can change the font color in here and it will change the SVG color as well as the size of it. Um, so it's inheriting it from our typography styles here. But for the most part, I would recommend removing this icon and replacing it with your own custom icon because these are really just meant to be placeholders. The last thing about this button that's kind of wild is you can have multiple instances of this button and it will still work. Um, and that's really helpful for when you have like full screen solutions like this and for some reason you want your close button to be somewhere else on the page. Um, so what you would do is you would grab your duplicated button and you would put it inside of your nav menu. 
right? Now you have two buttons and let's make this button uh, red for some reason, just so we can see that it's different. And then let's make this button, let's just do is one uh, for now. Let's make this one black. But you see like, uh, let's even preview it. Um, I can open and then close it from that button. Open it from this button, close it from that button. It totally works. So that opens up a whole bunch of possibilities as far as triggering this interaction of revealing and hiding your nav menu. And that's it. Those are all of our elements within the nav bar. Lots of stuff in there. I think for the most part, the biggest takeaways here, be mindful of the default values, set them all to either actual default, which is either zero or static if it's a position. But if you do wanna keep that default value, you just double click in there, have it turn blue just so you have a visual cue that there is a property in there, otherwise it's pretty easy to miss. With containers, you wanna add another div um, to do your layout. You don't wanna do your actual laying out and moving things around. Uh, that's strictly, the container is strictly just for width and centering that width. And the nav menu is where everything gets packed into and nav links are absolutely terrible. And for some reason, this whole thing is built with floats, so you wanna get rid of all your floats. And that's the Webflow nav component. Don't forget to subscribe. I'm gonna be putting out a bunch of tutorials, creating all sorts of different types of navigations with interactions, animations, all sorts of cool stuff. All right, see ya.